So uh, the three of us taking part in this, as it happens, two of us are both in Cambridge uh, and we have Professor Makihara in Tokyo and I'll just briefly introduce the other two. Um, so Professor Izura Makihara uh, is at the University of Tokyo's Research Centre for Advanced Science and Technology uh, and he's a specialist in the political history and bureaucracy of post-war Japan. And as you can see down at the bottom there, he's also spent some time in the UK uh, and indeed here in Cambridge. And he'll be uh, talking later to Dr. John Nielsen Wright, uh, who is a senior university lecturer uh, at Cambridge University. And he's also a senior research fellow uh, at Chatham House. And he was head of the Chatham House Asia program uh, for, from March 2014 to October 2016. And he's a specialist in Northeast Asia, particularly Japan uh, and the two Koreas. Okay, so um, I feel very honored to have this precious opportunity to give a short lecture today. Um, I'm Makihara, um, as I <coughs> as introduced um, uh, the professor of the University of Tokyo, the Research Center for Advanced Science and Technology. The name, um, the center which I belong is the, the Advanced Science Technology, but it contains uh, social science and it is very unique because it does not have any special area for uh, biology or uh, chemical science and so on. It uh, uh, <coughs> contains any kinds of science which is advanced. So I belong to this research center um, since uh, <coughs> 2013. Uh, I specialize in the historical analysis of Japanese politics and bureaucracy. Oral history is an effective research method that I, that I utilize in this field. I have been interviewed a number of major politicians and high ranking bureaucrats for many years, together with Professor Mikuria, who is a leading expert in this field in Japan. In particular, since I moved to the University of Tokyo in 2013 from Sendai, uh, the North area of Japan, I have interviewed bureaucrats who have served in the cabinet secretariat Naika Kambo in Japanese. During this period, I also had many opportunities to observe governmental decision-making process as a member of several national advisory board, where I closely observed the activities of the prime minister, the chief cabinet secretary, the minister in charge, and civil servants as the cabinet secretariat. Today, Based on such research and observation experiences, I will discuss how the Suga cabinet formed last September has fallen into a very difficult situation in the context of history and institutions. As I will mention later, this diagram is the essence of my presentation. Comparing the three essential uh, policy areas, diplomacy, economic policy and domestic affairs, Japan has not made much progress in institutional reform in the area of this domestic policy. And this has become a weakness in policy formation in Japanese, of the Japanese government. First of all, the two general elections in 2009 and 2012 were epoch-making events in the history of Japanese constitutional politics. The formation of the DPJ government in 2009 was the first time in Japan constitutional history that a minority opposition party won a general election and became the majority party in power. Therefore, the formation of the Abe cabinet through the landslide victory of the LDP in the 20. 12 general election was the second regime change in Japan constitutional history. The problem here is the issue of power transition and power succession. On the one hand, power transition refers to a shift in policy agenda from the former ruling party that lost the election to the winning opposition party. On the other hand, 
The power succession refers to a change of cabinet within the same ruling party framework. The change from Prime Minister Abe to Prime Minister Suga is just such a power succession. The 2012 power grab marked the first time for the LDP to win an election and go from opposition to ruling party. The succession of power in 2020 after the change of government in 2012 was also a first for the LDP. Thus, due to a series of firsts, a series of unpredictable political phenomena are occurring one after another in the current Japanese politics. One of them was the appointment of the chief cabinet secretary as prime minister. It is a very rare case that the former chief cabinet secretary becomes the prime minister. The only exceptional case was the uh, Shinzo Abe in 2006. The cabinet secretariat played an important role in this power succession in 2020. As the chief cabinet secretary in Abe under the Abe cabinet, Suga, the head of the cabinet secretariat, had extremely rich power resources. This is because the, because the cabinet secretariat in Japan is now as large as an ordinary ministry. This change started with the reorganization of ministries in 2001. At the moment, the legal capacity, <coughs> legal number of members of the cabinet secretariat was 186, but now it has more than 1,000. This is larger than the Ministry of Environment. An expansion of over five times, over five times, gave the cabinet secretariat larger power comparable to that of the Ministry of Finance. At the same time, the political reforms of the 1990s led to the provision of political party subsidies to each political party and the centralization of power in the hands of power party leaders, namely the party president and the party's general secretary general. The role of the party faction in old times, which used to distribute political funds among the members, has been diminished. After Prime Minister Abe announced his resignation in August 2020, Nikai, the party secretary general, and the chief cabinet secretary, Suga, joined forces strongly. The chief cabinet secretary, Suga, was supported by Nikai, the secretary general, and Suga became the party president, who in turn reappointed Nikai as secretary general again. A relationship of mutual support between the former chief cabinet secretary and the party secretary general has been established. This relationship implies a coalition of cadre between the government and the party, which has been centralized as a result of reforms since 1990s. The Suga cabinet was supported by a high approval rating when it was first formed. However, there is little public support for Suga's measures against the new coronavirus outbreak. Japan may appear makes success because the number of infected people is low compared to the Western countries, but this is because each citizen does not trust the government and protects them from themselves. The Suga cabinet has failed to issue an effective message to the people and public anger is growing. But the failure of handling coronavirus outbreak have been ongoing since the end of the Abe cabinet. So its cause is believed to be embedded in the political system, not is, uh, limited in the Suga cabinet. Then what are they? There are issues that, ja that Japan's governance structure reform since the 1990s has not embarked on. Compared to the Council on Economic and Fiscal Policy, 
経済財政諮問会議、インコノミックポリシー、and the National Security Council and the National Security Agency、国家安全保障会議、国家安全保障局、in foreign and security policy、there is no control tower for policy in domestic affairs. So,、um, please uh, so think simply, simply. National policies are divided into three categories economic, foreign, and domestic. In the context of globalization, Japan reforms have progressed in both economic and diplomatic spheres since 1990s. So, therefore, the ABE cabinet has dealt with TPP and Indo Pacific initiative、uh, in foreign policy and promoted ABEnomics. In economic policy, but it has actually struggled to deal with domestic issues such as 2018 flood disaster and this COVID 19. The Suga cabinet has inherited the policy framework of the Abe cabinet. Countermeasures against the new coronavirus outbreak became the most important issues. And diplomacy, which is Abe's fault, is not a high priority for Suga. Because of the due to the coronavirus outbreak. As the former chief cabinet secretary, Suga、uh, is in control of domestic affairs and should have been able to handle the task of fighting the new coronavirus outbreak smoothly. However, the Suga cabinet continues to fail on this issue. For example, the heavy rain in 2018. In, under the Abbey cabinet, caused torrential rain over a large area and extensive flooding damage. The area of damage was so large that it took the government a long time to assess the situation and provide assistance. COVID 19 measures also require handling of far more complex issues than expected. Japan's governing structure is powerless to deal with such complex domestic、uh, issues. The coronavirus outbreak and heavy rain in 2018 are new complex policy agenda caused by globalization of the economy and global warming. This is a new kind of politics that Japan has, Japan has begun to face. In order to solve these new complex domestic issues, it has become necessary to create a command center to coordinate comprehensively the domestic affairs, such as infrastructure development,、uh, disaster prevention, social security, public health, and negotiation with local governments. However, this is a very difficult task. Because Japan's domestic politics are different from those of any other country. The fact that Japan is a populous country, which is、uh, sometimes uh, Japan people, uh, <coughs> Japan people so,、uh, went out of their so, head.、Um, the fact that Japan is a populous country with a central administrative system means that all issues need to be handled by the central government. Please take a look at this table. The population of Japan is about、uh, 120 million, which is the 11th largest in the world. Countries with larger populations than Japan are either in a federal system or are developing countries. Compared to these countries, Japan. In Japan, the level of education of the people is high, and the public's assessment of the quality of the government policy is extremely harsh. These conditions result in an extremely high burden on the Japanese central government, that is to say, cabinet, Japanese cabinet, in making policy decisions in domestic affairs. by International standards. In domestic policy, the traditional political structure was preserved. The structure is first, French style central local relations, that is, a strong centralization. The second, German style principles of administrative organization law、uh, in German, resort princip, which strengthens the vertical division of ministries. 
Due to these historical characteristics of the Japanese system, it is not possible to refer to the American or British model because American or British model is a, a, continent, uh, is a common law system that, that is very different from the continental European and Japan system. And as I mentioned, so Japanese, uh, the structure of the Japanese domestic affair, domestic uh, affair is a French style or German style, not American or British style. And the most important expertise in this area is the administrative law, which Japan shared with the continental European countries. <clears throat> However, the establishment of the Ministry of the Interior, which uh, grasps uh, comprehensively the domestic issues, as in Germany and France. It is a pointless reform that goes back to the pre-war era for, the, for Japan and will not gain public support. The continental European countries do not provide any reform model. As a result, the coordination function in domestic politics has been weak and each ministry took a separate approach to dealing with the situations. Measures against new coronavirus outbreak as a new policy agenda in 21st century require a high degree of coordination in terms of domestic politics. In this case, like the heavy rain in 2018 um, for this, um, like this so photographs, the national, the prefectural, and the municipal governments need to negotiate closely to deal with the problem and provide uh, some public services to the people. This process takes a considerable amount of time and governmental resources. However, the, both the Abe and the Suga cabinet try to finish the process of policy implementation, such as vaccin vaccination, in a very, very short time, which caused a lot of confusion and lost the trust of people. Now, in retrospect, the Abe cabinet was fortunate because it had not faced the difficult challenges of domestic politics prior to the coronavirus outbreak. If the Abe cabinet had been faced with a such serious and widespread, spread, widespread uh, disaster or natural disaster like the coronavirus uh, pandemic or the great East Japan earthquake, it is quite possible that we have gone down the same path at the DPJ government. The reason why the Abe cabinet has been in power for so long is because it did not face any serious domestic political challenge. Of course, the Abe cabinet uh, tried to struggle with uh, economic policy and foreign policy, and they, I think, it it will it is it suc succeeded uh, due to the result of the reform to establish. Uh, <clears throat> so some control power center in diplomacy and economic policy. But in the domestic affairs, the cabinet has no control center and it, 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 <clears throat> it is very, very difficult to cope with such serious and complex and difficult problems. Therefore, the Abe cabinet collapsed in, the, collapsed in the face of the coronavirus outbreak and the Suga cabinet is also struggling to cope with this problem. I have recently published an editorial on the website in which I argue that Japan should establish national domestic council. This national domestic council should provide a comprehensive overview of the domestic policy field and it should be composed by the experts in domestic affairs who would provide necessary advice and make the meeting open to the public, thereby increasing transparency to the public. And of course, this uh, National Democratic Council, it has its own so secretary, secretarial section. And I think this council and its secretarial section uh, is, uh, combi will be combined and will become the control power center for the domestic affairs. 
I think this uh, reform will strengthen Japan policy capacity in domestic policy areas where prior reforms have not undertaken and would enable Japan to deal with the new and the complex policy challenges of the 21st century. As a result of the governance reform since 1990s, Japan's political system has strengthened its coordination function in the areas of foreign and economic policy. Without a national domestic council, Japan's political system will not be able to respond effectively to new domestic policy challenges. So I think this is a very important point that in the future, Japanese government without a new reform is likely to re-enter the era of short-time administrations as long as the difficult challenges of domestic politics persist, like this coronavirus outbreak for a long time. Thanks so much. Great, thank you very much, Makihara Sensei. So, John, um, how would you like to respond to that? Oh well, Jason, thank you very much for um, for the invitation. And um, let me start by saying how pleased I am to be able to share a virtual platform with my old friend uh, Makihara Sensei. Um, it's great to have this opportunity to talk about change in contemporary Japanese politics. Um, it was really interesting to hear your characterization of the difficulties that um, Prime Minister Suga is facing. And of course, it's striking, isn't it, how sharply his popularity has declined since the heady days of last September when he was at 70% or thereabouts in terms of his popularity, now languishing in, um, in the 30s. A reflection, I think, of those things that you mentioned that were really important, the pandemic, the um, anxiety surrounding the Olympics with 80% of Japanese public expressing their strong opposition. Um, I suppose I wanted to, to sort of try and look at the contrast between um, Mr. Suga's reputation when he was behind the scenes, as it were, and his difficulties now that he's a, adopted a much more public facing role. Because it seemed to me that when he was uh, Chief Cabinet Secretary, a lot of his power was over his control over personnel, his ability to place ambitious young politicians in significant positions in the party. And um, now, by contrast, a lot of that influence and power seems to have disappeared. Um, and he appears to have a very deferential relationship with Mr. Nikai, um, certainly judging from, uh, from press coverage, he seems to, to be following Mr. Nikai's lead on many, many different issues. Um, and I wonder how much of this is a structural problem, that whoever occupies the role of prime minister, in a sense, is removed from that day-to-day -day, um, business of politics of allocating positions for senior and rising members of the party, um, whether the prime minister's ship itself uh, and the daily pressures of having to be across both domestic and foreign policy issues has meant that Mr. Suga cannot excel in the areas where traditionally he used to excel. So that's kind of my first question. Um, my second question really, I suppose, goes to the heart of these interesting structural comparisons, as you rightly point out, it's, it's perhaps a mistake to think in terms of Britain or the United States as a model uh, for thinking about Japan, given uh, the important structural parameters, if you like. But there are areas in which, if you look back over the last 10 to 15 years or so, you can see an appetite on the part of some Japanese politicians, including former Prime Minister Abe, to echo elements of certainly the American presidential model, um, particularly through the strengthening of the cabinet secretariat. Um, some people have talked about the extent to which this vast expansion in advisors is comparable to the attempt to set up something equivalent to the executive office of the president um, with a desire to bring in special advisors to bypass the power of the bureaucracy. And even under Mr. Suga, um, that pattern of having non-official advisors, so people, particularly in the foreign ministry, for example, 
drawing in young um, and perhaps not so young academics to provide that expert advice. Do you envisage that as a route through which, when it comes to domestic politics, um, an expanded cabinet secretariat might acquire more influence, um, more of a critical faculty to get around the challenges of perhaps, to put it in very pejorative terms, groupthink within a bureaucratic culture? Is it important to be able to bring in um, non-bureaucratic advisors? Um, another kind of structural question for you, which comes back to this question of why it's been so difficult for Mr. Suga um, to push back against this rising tide of public opposition, is that he simply has to spend so much of his time as prime minister testifying to the diet. The rules of Japanese politics require prime ministers rightly or wrongly, to be fully accountable to parliament. And I certainly know anecdotally from speaking to officials in Japan how difficult it is for the prime minister's office to cope with the challenge of having to make those regular speeches in the diet to be accountable. And this comes back again to the kind of contrast between Mr. Suga's behind the scenes political actor and his public profile. Is the nature of contemporary Japanese politics such that if you're not seen to be a good public performer, um, whether that's at press conferences, and we know that Prime Minister Suga has had challenges at press conferences or on the floor of the diet, that this is a major liability. Um, and how does he get around that problem? Is it possible um, for him to, uh, to improve his public standing by by effectively being more effective in using the bully pulpit uh, of politics. Um, I also suspect um, that we've, we're seeing at the moment um, a lot of jockeying for what may be some formal succession to Prime Minister Suga, um, which reflects some of this change in style. Uh, Mr. Cornell, the former Defence and Foreign Minister, now the Administrative Reform Minister, is being touted as a potential successor. He se certainly seems to be the most popular figure at the moment. Um, and given that he's been put in charge of administrative reform and also handling the vaccine rollout, um, I, I invite you to reflect a little bit on, um, again, this question of style. Mr. Corno is quite an outspoken politician, but also the question of how the LDP manages that succession. Looking ahead to September, what are your expectations? Will this be an uncontested LDP presidential election? Um, a few weeks ahead of the scheduled lower house election in October. Um, I would imagine that the key issue here, for those of us who kind of follow the uh, minutiae of Japanese politics, is the question of factional balance. When Mr. Sugo was selected to be president of the LDP back in September to succeed Mr. Abe, five out of the seven LDP factions backed him. So it was an internal vote of support on the part of the party. Um, but interestingly, of course, Mr. Suga has not had to go and face the electorate on his own terms. So he has no mandate as such. Um, and given that the LDP has done badly in some recent uh, by-elections, it must be a difficult time for a prime minister who hasn't had that public endorsement. Are those five LDP factions going to remain rock solidly behind the prime minister, at least up until and perhaps potentially through the Olympics, assuming that the Olympics do in fact take place as we probably expect them to do? Um, I'll stop there because I have other questions that I'd like to come back to and, and, and discuss with you, um, particularly this important question of National Domestic Council, which I think is a very innovative uh, idea. Um, but perhaps we could start with some of those issues about personality, style, uh, the demands of the job of being prime minister, and very importantly, these internal factional questions. Akihara Sensei. Uh, thank you so much for the uh, very uh, sharp and uh, uh, important qu questions to me. And as for the first question, so the relationship uh, between the Suga and Nikai and the other politicians in the re <coughs> leaders of the LDP. I think that uh, so 
the the uh, another factor is uh, also the minister of the uh, minister of finance, and uh, he was the prime minister of Japan before the 2009. I think so. Uh, in the case of the policy succession, the most uh, 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 the, um, some so possible uh, candidate is uh, I think so. It might be the Ministry of Finance, means Minister of Finance, and like the the Gordon Brown after the Tony Blair in the UK. And I, but so I, I sh sh will show I, I show you the um, the power of the cabinet secretary secretariat um, has grown tremendously in from since uh, 2001, and the uh, the chief cabinet secretariat uh, Suga uh, could could um, utilize this. Um, organizational resources of the cabinet secretariat. And so he is a uh, very, very important cam candidate after the after the Abe. And so I think so Nikai, eh, who is the uh, leader of the small political <coughs> party <coughs> faction in the LDP, um, Nikai and paid attention to the Suga, and so he tried to make coalition, and Suga responded to the Nikai, I think. And uh, so Nikai in, in Japan, the government and the political party, both of these, both of these organizations uh, has been centralized uh, due to the governance reforms since the 1990s. And, I think so. Suga cabinet uh, or and the uh, power trend, power succession from the Abe to Suga uh, is a result of the political reform since uh, 1990s. I think. And um, but so the, uh, as for the second question, so Suga cabinet had fallen <coughs> into the very, very difficult situation. Um, and so it uh, lost the public support, which it uh, gained uh, just after the formation of the cabinet. I think so. Um, most of the Japanese political scientists or journalists have some bias that the, the Prime, uh, former uh, the uh, past prime minister Hashimoto and Koizumi bias we I called so Hashimoto Ryutaro which uh, planned to reform the total central government in the late 1990s was a very very excellent and very very so uh, talented uh, politician who knew the deta detailed institutional information about the government and administration. And um, Koizumi Junichiro, uh, who became the prime minister in 2001, um, could uh, govern the new uh, governmental minister, ministerial organization which Hashimoto planned. And this is a uh, the kind of the organization which had the centralization to the cabinet secretariat and the cabinet could use, could dominate. So the government, whole of the government and it, it could lead the uh, political <coughs> situation with a new, newly born uh, cabinet secretariat, which has the legal power to make the law and to uh, organize uh, the new uh, policy center in the cabinet. Cabinet, and uh, as you know, um, Prime Minister Koizumi is very, very so. Uh, I think so. Some type or some kind of so animal <coughs> instinct. Uh, the political animals, animal to who have very, very so sharp instinct to catch the. Uh, stream of the political uh, situation. 
And I, th I think he, uh, he could uh, catch the um, very, very basic uh, policy uh, <coughs> uh, direction uh, when he uh, participates the policy council in the government and uh, he catch he he can he could catch the um, so um, <clears throat> basic direction of the um, of the policy in the future. So he has some uh, kind of the I think so so instinct, uh, very very so sharp instinct, and so I think so. The uh, Japanese so journalists and political scientists. Uh, uh, <clears throat> gradually uh, began to think that uh, in the future, so we can, we, we could so have the prime minister uh, as high as Hashimoto and Koizumi, but the <clears throat> result is not is, is maybe might be maybe so contrary to our expectation. So as you uh, uh, so, uh, uh, Dr. Newsom Wright argued that uh, so um, the power succession in Japan is not so handled smoothly uh, because so. Uh, Average level of politicians uh, who have some political resources to have became the prime minister. So Japanese government or administrative organization should support such uh, prime ministers since uh, after the Koizumi, I think. That is a, a, a difficult uh, situation in Japan, but uh, especially. Mm, Abe cabinet uh, after the 2000, uh, after the 2012, um, made the team, um, team which is uh, supported by the uh, all members of the LDP and so some so political advisors, and they uh, grasp the grasp the all ministries through the cabinet secretariat bureaucrats but <clears throat> gradually it uh, this team was collapsed and abe a prime minister abe a, was hit by the political scandal and it diminished its its power but as i argue that uh, the abe cabinet uh, could handle the diplomacy and economic policy <coughs> based on the control center of these policy areas, but it lacked uh, the policy coordination center in the domestic affairs. So um, in the historical um, scenery, I think so Japanese gov government uh, had been able to handle the domestic challenges because in the former era, so it's different from the COVID-19 or the global warming, uh, Japanese government has not faced serious uh, domestic challenges, but now it changed. And also, and one thing, uh, one point I should argue that the, uh, uh, Prime Minister Hashimoto and Prime Minister Koizumi uh, are, were called the Public welfare tribes, koseizoku. It mean it means that they <coughs> belong to the uh, policy section in the LDP, which is strongly tied with the uh, Ministry of <coughs> of so welfare. And they 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 knew the each uh, bureaucrat in the Ministry of Welfare very very in detail, and they they knew the. <coughs> Um, detailed no detailed information on the public welfare policy. So, um, if some serious questions, some serious problems of the public welfare uh, occurred, they could so 
um, they they have they had their own channel with the Ministry of Welfare, and so they they could uh, understand the situation very very in the short time. So the coordination uh, of course uh, was, was uh, always very very low, but. Uh, for example, so Prime Minister Abe or Prime Minister Suga, uh, they do not know the <coughs> um, policy information on the so mini, on the uh, task of the Ministry of the Welfare. So, so um, if especially under the coronavirus uh, outbreak, they they um, uh, they they tend to um make long time to to understand the so situation i think so coordination costs are very very high in this policy area that that with uh, i think so the the another problem um and after that uh cohesion, i think and so um as for um Kono, uh i think so he he is very very uh, smart politician and he knew the diplomacy and he had a strong tie with the U.S. I think so he is very very um, um, potential candidate for the future prime minister, but uh, he has a strong uh, beliefs to eliminate nuclear nuclear <coughs> power as a politician. So. Now he hid his belief, but I think if he with the, uh, he, he becomes a candidate of the uh, party president in the future, um, he should uh, deal with his old belief to eliminate the nuclear power plant. I think so, uh, and, and this, a nuclear power plant problem is, uh, I think, so some very very uh, difficult uh, problem. Difficult. So it 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 it, uh, it, it it's some difficult question with the uh, U.S. government. So um, it is the problem. But um, some uh, journalists uh, told me that uh, economists and the uh, civil servants in the Ministry of Finance. Uh, frequently uh, go to Kono and to have a lecture about the uh, present uh, policy situation. So I think Kono is, we should uh, pay attention to Kono. And the last point about the National Domestic Council. Mm, I think so, it is so, it is uh, modeled um, by the uh, National Economic Council and National so Security Council in economic policy field and uh, um, diplomacy field. Um, but so um, the problem of the uh, domestic politics is about the local governments in Japan. Uh, Japan has about uh, 1,800, 1,800 so local governments, and each of the governments has its own resources, and the government should uh, consult with them to implement policy uh, to and to distribute uh, public service to each citizen. Uh, it is very, very a uh, difficult task, but uh, so far, it this task has con had been conducted by the national bureaucrats and the bureaucrats in the local governments. But uh, especially after the, the Abe, Abe cabinet, the ministers or politicians, uh, I think so, uh, have, have made efforts, made too much effort to, to promote their own will to the, uh, bureaucratic world. And so Seiji Shudo, political leadership, uh, what they say. But in this domestic field, I think so it is this uh, political leadership has is not if so is, is not 
is less effective than the foreign and economic policy uh, because it had many too much too many stakeholders to coordinate with. So I think National Domestic Council is one is one possible tool to negotiate uh, efficiently or effectively with such take, stakeholders, I think. But maybe it's very, very difficult to, to overcome the sectionalism about ministry, uh, in ministry of domestic affairs, so ministry of uh, environment, ministry of uh, uh, construction and uh, uh, transportation, ministry of um, local government, and so on. But I think it's one of the uh, solution for the present Japanese government to, to, to make progress in the future, in the 21st century. Thank you.